We are live. Good morning. For um, those of you who may have forgotten me, it's Mayor Kevin Davis. I'm chairing the planning committee this morning. And uh, the meeting is being clerked by Emma. Emma, have you taken the roll call? Yes, I have. Thank you very much. So members, does anybody have a declaration of a pecuniary interest that uh, needs to be made regarding any of the, well, two items that are on our agenda? No raised hands. So we do have uh, one item for consideration, which uh, to which there'll be a um, hearing under the Planning Act, but we do have a consent item on the agenda plus minutes. So does anybody want either of those two items separated? Okay, not seeing a request. So if I can have a mover and a seconder then that the two items not separated for discussion being the minutes and the 6.1.1, the Nature's Grand Subdivision. If I could have a mover and seconder, moved by Councillor Sless, seconded by Councillor Sicoli. Emma, would you please take the vote? Thank Emma, you. Emma, just before you read that, can you can you also confirm the two items, the title of the two items that we were voting on? Absolutely. We're voting on the minutes from April, and we are voting on item 6.1.1, Nature's Grand Subdivision, Phase 1, and Telephone City, Business Park West, Traffic and Parking Control. And that item carried unanimously. All those vot voting in favor are Mayor Davis, Councillor Sokoli, Councillor Sless, Councillor Carpenter, and Councillor Van Tilburg. Great, thanks very much. So we'll now move into the public hearing. There is one item and it is a public meeting that's held in accordance with the provisions of the Planning Act. The purpose of this hearing is to discuss the planning application, to hear from the public either in support of or in opposition to the application. At the end of the public meeting, the committee will pass a recommendation, which is generally considered for final decision at the next meeting of council, which is typically the last Tuesday of each month. The name of anyone who speaks in regards to any item will appear within the meeting minutes. Anyone wishing notice of any further proceedings regarding the application should provide their name and address to the clerk's office. We also ask that members of the public in attendance today speak to an item. Please be sure to add your contact information to the sign-in sheet located at the delegates table. So the order we follow is the applicant, which in this particular matter is city, will speak first, followed by well, it's, it's kind of hard to be followed by municipal staff. So it'll be followed by the public. And then the uh, municipal staff will have up to uh, um, five minutes to provide a clarification or reply at the end. So we're going to consider an item. It's 4.1. It's the city initiated application for official plan amendment OP0223. It's the Mohawk Lake District plan. And it's number report number 2023-2023. 309, and this is a city initiative application. So the applicant in this matter, in fact, is the city. And we do have Tara Tran, a senior planner uh, with the city who's been shepherding this file, the Mohawk Lake District file for a number of years now. So Tara, you've got 10 minutes to make your presentation inclusive questions. Good morning. As you said, I'm Tara Tran, Senior Planner and the Project Lead for the Mohawk Lake District Plan Project. I'm pleased to be here to explain the next stage in the implementation of the Mohawk Lake District Plan. To achieve the vision set out in that plan, the city's official plan is proposed to be amended to update the land use designations and establish site-specific policy to support and guide how the district lands may be developed in the future. This city initiated official plan amendment is an important next step. I will explain the highlights of the official plan amendment. The proposed official plan amendment is derived from the council approved Mohawk Lake District Plan shown here. Overall, the Mohawk Lake District Plan recommends um, mixed use buildings at various heights, the strategic location of parks and open spaces, as well as a proposed new road. The new land uses would serve <clears throat> the local neighborhood as well as become a cultural and recreational hub for the larger Brantford community and a tourist destination for the surrounding area. 
There are three main areas of the district with slightly different development objectives. The areas are the gateway area, the cultural, the culture and community destination area, and the Mohawk Lake and Park recreational area. These areas are identified on a new map that will become a new Appendix C in the official plan. This official plan amendment also proposes to add policies to the modified area section of the OP specific to each of these areas. The first area is the gateway area, which is the section of Granite Street from the downtown to the Mohawk Street intersection. The gateway area is intended to be a transition to the district from the downtown. Site-specific policies for the gateway area include building heights that will be a minimum of six stories at the Clarence Street intersection to act as a gateway feature, and the remaining heights will be between three to six stories. A range of land uses are envisioned here, including residential, commercial, office, and institutional uses. The second area is the culture and community destination area, which is envisioned to be the heart of Mohawk Lake District. And this area will provide neighborhood amenities while also serving as a vibrant cultural destination for the entire Brantford community. This area is proposed for a mix of residential, office, and commercial uses that will front onto a new road. Building heights will be between three to six stories and up to eight stories will be allowed if the proposed development meets specific criteria outlined in the official plan, such as adequate parking, landscaping, and mitigating shadow impacts. To facilitate the new development recommended by the Mohawk Lake, Mo Mohawk Lake District Plan, a few land use designations need to be tweaked. The changes <clears throat> apply to a portion of 22 Mohawk Street where parks and open space designation is recommended, and that's the Hatch Triangle on this map. And that will help establish a focal point and a softer transition from the existing houses to any new development in the district. And secondly, for 66 Mohawk Street, a portion of this property is proposed to be redesignated to residential to support new residential uses and or mixed commercial and institutional uses. And that's the larger rectangle shape that is also hatched. On this section, the redesignation aligns with the potential redevelopment proposals from the community organizations, the Lansdowne Children's Center and the Droit de Desne Aboriginal Health Center. The original Mohawk Lake District Plan did show this portion of 66 Mohawk Street as institutional lands, but planning staff proposed that the residential designation is appropriate um, because of its greater flexibility. The institutional land use designation is more limited. Meanwhile, the residen residential designation allows a range of residential uses and neighborhood supporting uses such as artisans, establishments, business and financial institutions, healthcare offices, recreational and or cultural facilities, convenience retail, personal service establishments and restaurants. Lastly, it's noted that through the modified policy area policies, the museums and outdoor education and interpretive centers are allowed in the parks and open space designation, which facilitates the proposal of a new facility by the Canadian Industrial Heritage Center. A couple of other things, the new road that I mentioned um, is shown here uh, in the orange. So it will serve as a main street that will be aligned north-south with Emily Street and Drummond Street pedestrian bridge. It will be designed to be pedestrian and bike friendly, as well as provide rooms, room for vehicles to move through the district and for parking. And lastly, the creation of a waterfront promenade along the south side of Mole Canal is a highly recommended feature of the district. The waterfront promenade will create an active transportation corridor along Greenwich Street that connects the district to Mohawk Lake and Mohawk Park. And it's recommended to have a wide pedestrian boulevard um, and multi-use paths. The last feature of the culture and community area is proposed to be a new large park that can be a host to major events and community celebrations, as well as be passive recreational space. It's noted that this official plan designation establishes that land use designation for a park, but future direction on the exact features of this park will come at a later stage in the overall implementation plan. And these photographs are just examples of what this space could look like. 
The last area of the district is the Mohawk Lake and Park Recreational Area. This area is intended to remain as a park. The new proposed policy elaborates that trail improvements are warranted and potential canal crossings or a new public open space south of Mohawk Lake could be considered to provide additional recreational opportunities. Other proposed amendments to the modified policy section of the OP will add the vision statement for the Mohawk Lake District, add requirements to ensure land use compatibility that for new development to integrate with the existing land uses and add new urban design guidelines specific to Mohawk Lake District within the city's overall design manual. Lastly, an administrative change to the official plan is to update the map showing the modified policy area and updating the name to Mohawk Lake District. Now, members of the public were able to comment on this proposed OPA through an information meeting held in January, as well as through emails. These comments are, were provided or are provided as appendices to the staff report. We heard comments about the preferred housing type, as well as concerns about the tenure of housing. It is noted that one email that was received supported the city building affordable housing for seniors, and another email opposed development on a vacant city-owned property on Greenwich Street. Additional correspondence was received after the report was prepared, and that was from an area high school student who provided information on some innovative features that she thought would be interesting for the district. And as well, Bell Canada confirmed that they had no comments at this time, but want to continue to be informed um, on the project. In conclusion, this city initiated application to amend the city of Brantford official plan will establish the land use policies that enable the implementation of the district plan. The official plan carries forward the vision of the district in each of the three areas within the district. Planning and Development Services is of the opinion that the official plan amendment is consistent with the provincial policy statement and which encourages intensification and in conformity with the growth plan, which encourages the creation of complete communities. Planning and Development Services recommends approval of this application as an important next step in the, the implementation. Thank you. Thank you, Tara. We'll see if there are any questions. <clears throat> Yes, Councilor McCurry and then Councilor Van Tilburg. Uh, Mayor, thank you. Uh, thanks for the presentation, Tara. Um, you you uh, mentioned uh, the Drummond Street pedestrian crossing as a linkage that would, I believe you said, continue the Emily Street um, right of way. Uh, I realize it's a different department, but um, do we, is anyone aware whether or not we have a plan to replace that bridge? It's been condemned and out of service for quite some time. Through the chair to Councilor McCreary, uh, that would be under parks and the parks portfolio. And I don't know if they have immediate plans to date, but certainly as part of the overall district plan, we are encouraging that pedestrian crossing to be established again. Right, so any other uh, questions relevant to the public hearing? So we got next Councilor Van Tilburg, then Councilor Sluss. <laughs> that bridge is relevant to the public maybe not the hearing but uh, i'm glad it's part of the official plan or part of this uh, zoning and planning and i'm sure parks and rec will get on to it as soon as uh, this gets through because people are really excited um tara i wanted to thank you for ho for hosting kind of moderating that meeting that we held at the civic center um again how many people were um present and online and watching YouTube, like, was it over 100 or so? Not quite 100, but we did have about 65 to 70 people in person at the meeting, which was held at the Civic Centre. Um, roughly about 20 people registered to participate through Zoom. And then because the meeting was live streamed on the City of Brantford's YouTube page, the day immediately, the morning after, I, I was able to find out that about 35 people had already watched the video so I, I assume they were watching at the same time and that was live streamed too correct for the public that's right so there was people that were on zoom 
there were people watching YouTube and there were people in the Civic Center for the public hearing. That's correct. Or for the for the for the meet, not the public hearing, the ward meet. I think that's amazing, and uh, I was really appreciative. I could see all the excitement in this, and uh, I I'm very happy um, <laughs> with everything I see here. It's all it's all coming together. So you did, did you hear any resistance regarding uh, the zoning in that meeting? I don't recall any. Did you do you re, do you recall any? Through the chair to Council Van Tilburg, and uh, no overall resistance to the official plan amendment to move forward with the proposed vision and the uses that we see here. Correct. And uh, we also had a lot of enthusiasm for many of the projects that were going in there, including Lansdowne. Was that not uh, well received? Through the chair to councillor, yes, I would say that there was um, good support for those community well, organizations. Thank you very much. Councillor Schloss. Thank you, and thank you, Tara, for your presentation. It's always... Uh, haven't seen you in a while, but it's, it's good to see when you do it. Um, the impact of the secretariat um, on the entire project, um, is that going to affect uh, the eventual outcome of what we plan to see? Through the chair to Councillor Sless, I'll start. I don't know if others would like to add. Um, at this stage, we are proceeding as, as we would anyway. It's all a policy desktop exercise that we're at right now. Um, and we do continue to communicate with the Survivor Secretariat to share information with them and have them share information back. They uh, Just to add, they did deliver a presentation at the information meeting in January. Um, so at this time, we're proceeding as we normally would. Um, you know, despite any, um, you know, additional work that the survivor secretary may be considering. Okay, because I, I think I read in the background material that they were asking us to stop development. Uh, through the chair to Councillor Celeste, Nicole Wilmot, Director of Planning and Development Services. Um, so the, the Secretariat um, did, as, as Tara mentioned, they did make a presentation at uh, the open house meeting, and, and we have been in communication with them, particularly around this site. As, as this council is well aware, there's been a lot of disturbance on this property. There's been a lot of background work um, uh, that has been done with respect to the remediation, and we've been working to provide the Secretariat with an overview of, of what that remedial program looks Look like and that will help them to define their ultimate plans with respect to investigations on these properties if if they feel that that is um, appropriate. With respect to the comment to stop, what we heard was um, please slow down and take into consideration the needs of the Secretariat. Um, and so when we explained to them that this is a desktop policy review um, and really just setting in motion the, the high level vision for these lands, that this is not, um, there are still many steps to come with respect to zoning as well as the uh, preliminary draft plan work that we're doing. There's, there's a lot of work still to happen here. And so with that knowledge and understanding, um, we have been able to continue to proceed with, with their knowledge and understanding of the steps that we're at today and what is to come in the future. Um, whether or not there will be a long-term impact, I think it's, it's early to say. Okay. In, in your discussions with them, was there a timeline at all? As far as Bless, work? that's, it's not relevant to the public hearing before us and the official plan. I, I accept that it's of great public interest, but they're really you're veering off into a subject matter that uh, I'm going to deem as the chairperson is not relevant to this particular public hearing. It's relevant, but not to this hearing. Okay. Then just one, one final that I think is relevant. The, uh, the gateway, uh, you, you have a, a minimum of six floors. Is there a maximum? At this time, no, we've established um, minimum uh, just to encourage intensification, which is appropriate in the gateway area, and particularly at that Clarence Street intersection. That area actually also overlaps with the downtown designation. So the downtown also encourages greater number of stories, but three to six stories for the remainder of the Greenwich Street corridor is considered appropriate in, you know, to be compatible with and transition appropriately to the existing uses. Okay, so, so 
from that, I would presume anybody could propose as high as they wanted in the gateway area. Is that, am I understanding that correct? We, we would be willing to consider um, additional heights um, if appropriate setbacks were, were considered and shadow impacts were mitigated. Um, certain, certainly that could be proposed and we would look at it to make sure it was appropriate. Okay, I, I think there's other folks wanted to chime in. Thank you. Uh, so through the chair to the councillor, just to just to add on that. Um, so the, the, the official plan amendment is really to establish as we've identified that sort of high level vision and set the parameters for development. Details around zoning, setback, heights, what's appropriate, that will be further assessed through the next stages of work that we're doing, which is a while away, but that will come through the zoning bylaw work that we will be doing. So at this point in time, we're proceeding with an official plan amendment to implement the vision and the principles of the Mohawk Lake District, but those fine details details of zoning will come at a later stage. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Chair. Yes, uh, actually, we're now going to 17 minutes. So I'm going to say that's the end of uh, this portion of the public hearing, unless someone wants to put a motion on the floor to uh, extend the time beyond 17 and a half minutes. Not seeing that. Thank you very much, Tara, for uh, we'll call you back at the end to do a uh, reply. So we're now at uh, the stage where normally in a hearing we'd hear from staff, but obviously since the city initiated, we're gonna skip over that. We'll move right to the public portion. Uh, so the floor is now open to members of the public who would like to speak to this particular item, either for or against. And I believe Emma, we've had no one that's registered virtually to to come in virtually? No, that's correct. Okay. And I don't see anybody present in the council chamber, but I'll ask uh, two more times. Are there any members of the public uh, in the chambers or outside the chambers who would like to speak to this application, either uh, in for or opposed? Uh, would you please come forward? I'll ask for a third and last time. If there is a member of the public who is present in the chamber or outside the chamber in the foyer who would like to speak to this application, either in support of or in opposition, now is your last opportunity to come forward to speak to this matter. So, not seeing any member of the public, although as Councillor Van Tilburg noted, there was a public meeting that had uh, full and extensive participation, including both ward councillors. So, uh, all right, you're back up for the reply. Is since nothing happened uh, over the last three minutes since you last testified, I don't really think there's a need for reply. But uh, I assume you're going to throw the floor open to any questions because we do have five minutes at this stage. So, Councilor McCurry, you still have questions? Thank you, Chair. With respect to the um, the inclusion in. The amendment with respect to building heights. Um, if we were to receive an application to exceed the three to six story height, we would certainly consider it, right? Through the chair to Councilor McCreary, so the official plan is meant to establish, you know, the guidance to then uh, later on establish what we would permit under the zoning bylaw. Um, so we are establishing that this area is suitable in for, for intensification. So the minimums are established as between three to six stories. And then the modified policy area does have a specific section that guides how proposals higher than that would be allowed. And that would be to ensure that there's adequate parking for additional stories, to ensure that landscaping and amenity space is provided and then shadow impacts are mitigated. So we would consider it under, you know, if they follow those guidance. Uh, yes. Yes. Thank you. And um, with respect to the the, um, the the heights where we're not specifying height, um, there's really no limit. Is that correct? Where the the new official plan does seem to stay away from stating maximums to allow for the consideration of site-specific development proposals. For instance, the development that's in the, the old Gordon Guscott 
uh, GM dealer lands, we have some pretty high buildings proposed there. And, and so this area could see that kind of intensity as well. Um, through the chair to the councillor, um, site specific development proposals would have to come forward to justify it and show that it's merited and compatible with that area. Yes. So it could be could be 10 stories, could be 20 stories, depending on. I'm going to deem that not relevant. This is an official plan hearing. It's not at the zoning stage. Uh, it's pure speculation. It's not relevant to the issues before us. Do you have any relevant questions to the hearing? Mayor has come back from his time off very, um, very. Uh, you're, you're coming close to being ruled out of order and your microphone turned off. Why don't you just end it while you're still ahead of the game? So we'll move to Councillor Carpenter. Thank you're you, next. Mayor. Thank you for that. Thank you. You're Mr. welcome. Thank you. I appreciate uh, thank you. it. I think I have the floor. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, you've been on this file for a long time, right? I mean, a decade maybe. <laughs> I don't want to age you, but uh, you did a terrific job here uh, on this proposal, and, and this this is a fantastic work. Uh, uh, I I just want to say, like, uh, th this whole process, it still has got a ways to go after this, right? Through the chair to Council Carpenter, yes, it has been coming on 13 years now. Um, yeah. oh. The it, There is a, a few, quite a few more stages to get any sort of construction happening, um, but these are all important uh, next steps to support that. Yeah. Um, yeah. So. And, and I, I raise that, Mr. Mayor, because I think it's important to know how long we've been working on this and that the community has been involved in engagement all along from the very beginning, right up to the January meeting, as was as the mayor has said. There's been plenty of consultation in the community as well behind it. Uh, I just want to thank you for all the work you've done. The department stood behind you. Thank you for your terrific work. So not seeing uh, any further raised hands for questions. Uh, thank you very much, Shar. That uh, was an excellent presentation. Yes, I as well. As mayor, commend you for your dedication and commitment to this file and shepherding this through a very long but um, an, an important process that's been fully, uh, fully public and uh, will continue to be so as we move forward. Assuming this passes today. <clears throat> so. We need to move on to the decision-making stage and can I have a mover and seconder to place item 4.1 on the floor. Moved by Councillor Carpenter, seconded by Councillor Van Tilborg. Emma, could you please share that on the screen? So Mr. Mr. Mayor, could you switch it around and make Councillor Van Tilburg the mover yeah, being just, it says, I'll take second. Yeah, I'm happy to do that. Um, standard protocol says, because you're president of the council chamber, yours is first, but I'm accepting that it'll be Councillor Van Tilburg as the mover and yourself as the seconder. So there's the resolution. Any discussion? Seeing none. Uh, Emma, would you please take the vote? Thank you. Item 4.1, City Initiated Application for Official Plan Amendment OP0223, Mohawk Lake District Plan, carried unanimously on a recorded vote of 6 to 0. All those councillors voting in favor are councillors Van Tilburg, Carpenter, McCreary, Sless, Sicoli, and Mayor Davis. Thank you, Emma. So that deals with the one matter that was before us for a public hearing. We've already dealt with the consent item and also the minutes. And there are no resolutions and there's no notices of motion. So the meeting is now adjourned until next month.